Hi, I'm just going to talk you through a few key parts of my program. So here's the logon page, this is where the employees enter their email and their password to get logged in. I'm just entering mine now, and my password, there we go, we're in. Uh, so this is the home page, this has got a couple of key bits of data on it, so it's got the task that the employees need to do. So <clears throat> here we can see we've got five orders that are waiting to be dispatched and we've got one item that's out of stock. We've also got a suggested action, uh, which is we've got a l three low stock alerts. Uh, so let's start by looking at the orders. So here's the view orders. So here we can see we've got all the orders. The, it the items highlighted in red are the items that are waiting to be dispatched and have been paid for. So if we're looking for a specific order, we've got a couple of options to find it. So we can use the sort function to look at the customer ID or any of these to sort by it. So we can look at the date, any of these. And if, say, we had a lot of orders and we wanted to reverse it uh, to look at something at the bottom of the list, we can press this button and it reverses the order uh, and then back again. So this bit here uses a merge sort and this uses a stack, which is both very efficient. Or, if we want to search for a specific order ID, what we can do is just type the number in, so 1, or if we type another one that doesn't exist, you just won't get anything, or if you type something that's not valid, you'll get invalid input, so we can restore it by just searching by customer ID. So, uh, let's move on to the next part, so uh, we can email people from there, so if we click on an order and then click email uh, it gets auto populated with the customer's email and then if we do the subject test and then test email and then we click send we have a little confirmation telling us the email has been sent and now if we have a look in our inbox there we go and you see it's been nicely formatted so it looks nice and professional so the customer trusts what they receive in the email uh, so let's exit out of there. Uh, right, so let's move on to the next bit. So printing invoices. So you select the customer that we want to print an invoice for. Let's do that. And then, as you can see, we've got all the details that a legal invoice needs. So it needs to have our address, here the seller's address. It needs to have the buyer's address. It needs to have the date of purchase the date that the invoice is being made and all these other details to make it a legal invoice. Um, so we can go and hit print, uh, as I'm sure you can hear, the, uh, the printer's printing it out now. I'll display a copy of it now so you can see what it looks like when it comes off the printer. Um, so that's everything for this section. Uh, and also, if you wanted to, say, dispatch this order here, uh, we need to print a label so we can post it for the customer. So here we go, we've got a preview of what the label is going to look like and we can add a customs declaration if we need one. We've got two types, a CN22, uh, this is for low, va uh, low value, low weight items. Uh, this is for high value, high weight items, a CN23. Uh, but this is a UK buyer, this one, so we don't need one. We can also add a return address. Um, um, so we can print that out, and I'm sure you can hear the printer again. <laughs> um, I'll attach a photo again on the screen of the printout. Um, and then once we've done that, we can uh, mark it as dispatched by clicking this button here, and that's going to send a confirmation to the buyer to tell them, oh here we go, tell them their order's on its way. Uh, so you can see it's got their it's got where it's been sent to and it's got their first name. It has their first name in it so they know it's not a phishing email so they can trust this email. Uh, and it looks nice and professional as well. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, and it's also, after you click that dispatch button, you see it's been marked as dispatched. It's no longer in red. Uh, the next, so we can also view the details of any order that we want. And that's probably about it for this section, right? So let's move on to the message center. So here's where we can view emails from customers, we can send emails, all that sort of good stuff. Um, so here's some emails from customers, we can reply to them, it auto populates their thing. Or if we like, 
we can load more messages or if we like don't we want to email someone else we can just put whatever we want in here so as you can see if we put an email that isn't valid in it won't work it uses regex to ensure that it uh, that it checks that the email is right so if we try and do that it will tell us invalid email because it's not a valid email uh, if we do dot co dot this dot uh, if we to at signs and send it invalid email there we go so if we gmail.com you see there we go there's a valid email sent the message and now if we go back to here we can see uh, we can flag emails if we want to or we need to talk to this person later because uh, we've got something to look back at so that's about it for this section uh, if we head back uh, let's have a look at the stock control bit okay so as we load into the stock control bit we've got a warning saying we've got an item out of stock um, so so the employees can look at that and get it reordered so here we go we can see the item out of stock so if you want to make this back in stock we can say we want to put 100 in there update the quantity uh, say we want to add a new product so let's call it new product 198 product ID, there we go, and then let's add the product, and then we decide, okay, maybe we don't, we don't want this new product, let's remove it, and it's gone, and then that's about it for this section, right, next section, so let's look at the performance section next, this is where the business can look at how it's been performing in the last uh, year, and well, in whatever period they select, um, and analyse the business's performance. So as you can see, we've got a graph here. The blue lines are the revenue in pounds, and the red line, uh, the red bars are the number of items sold. Uh, so we can select the period. So if we want a year, we want 31 days. We want seven days. We can also do the graph type if we want to look at it in a different way. We can also see here we've got an analysis of the last month. So as you can see, the business hasn't been doing very well in the last 31 days. Uh, the quantity is down 37%. Revenue has gone down by 3.2%. That's about it for this section. Right, moving on to the settings. Uh, so, if we want to add a new uh, employee, what we can do is put that email address in here. And then let's have their password. Password123. Let's add the user. There we go, we get a two factor authentication code and let's see we go we get in and let's try and enter something that isn't the code oh yeah not correct that code right if we enter the code we got admin has been sex successfully added uh, and if you try and add something here that's not a company email address it may be a valid email address but because <clears throat> it's got to be a company email address for it to be added to the system for security so see it must be a company email address Equally, you, it will verify that it is a real email address um, just to add a layer of security. So if I put like um, two at signs or something like that by mistake, it'll say it needs to be a real email address. Uh, so we can also delete the, uh, the employee we just added uh, by doing that. There we go. Check credentials for value. Mercury components. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, there we go. Compon components. Delete. There we go. Admin user is successfully removed. Then we can go back home, and that's about it. Thanks for having a look. Um,